Hey guys, hope everything's going well. You guys know the drill. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below. Uh, follow me on Instagram at AIH underscore sports. Alrighty, today I'm going to be doing a video about the hype of Zion Williamson. Now, the jury's still out on whether he's going to be a decent player. Uh, however, a few things from a sports car perspective, a lot of people were buying his hype and they got burned with it. And now someone who spent uh, $200,000 on his logo man card that sold on Golden earlier this year, they probably have a lot of money. You know, they, they were fetching uh, 200 th that card, you know, if they're able to put down $200,000, they probably have a lot of dough and they're probably not going to go bankrupt, but who knows? Maybe they levered themselves so much. And now if you look at Zion, uh, there are rumors he was allegedly over 330 pounds. And I was looking at weight of some individuals of these athletes. Shaq was what, 324 pounds from what I look at it but he was a dominating center you know Shaq was a beast Shaq was a champion now Williamson Zion he has been injured more than he's played and he allegedly has gained this weight and for me as an individual who speculates and also collects I don't want to put my money in a guy that is overweight for his position and i understand some people may have trouble losing weight but i am looking at it from okay am i going to make money on this guy who is needing to lose weight now he can lose weight everyone in my opinion has the ability to lose weight through intermittent fasting and it should also be consulted with the, your physician. But at the same time, I don't want to throw my hard-earned money into this guy. And I'm looking at um, all the headlines um, and all these guys throwing money left and right at Zion. And I was trying to do a data dive into what was the most amount of money people were paying. And it looks like the 200 then $210,000 Zion card um, was the most. If there's a, a more expensive card, let me know. And it's so weird. The headlines at the time, people are saying, oh, this card could go for $750,000. It actually went for, what, $210,000. So that's what I'm just looking at from the data. Once again, if I'm wrong on this, let me know. And at that time in January, February, I also noticed Top Shot was going crazy. And for the people that have watched me from earlier on, I did a video at the time, avoid NBA Top Shot like the plague. And if you looked at all the comments, everyone was basically hating on me. And I remember ESPN and the one guy, the ex-punter McAfee, he was sending his followers to NBA Top Shot right at the top. And the headlines in the news, NBA Top Shot is going to go through the moon. The valuation is over a billion dollars. MJ is getting on it. Durant's getting on it, et cetera, et cetera. You had top names from the NBA, former players and current players getting in on the action and me who's been burned many times in markets because I listened to the media I went with the hype that was the worst time to go on it I got ratioed on my video um, I think I got over 2,000 views on it uh, but I ultimately was correct in the terms of in terms of timing NBA top shot and the top or close to the top and uh, the same thing was true with uh, all these basketball cards. MJ's uh, FLIR PSA 10 went for seven hundred what fifty thousand dollars. 
sure, I get it. Most of us can't play that ball game, pay a million dollars for those cards. But at the same time as other cards, people who have the ability to throw down thousands of dollars, they bought at the worth the worst absolute time. And sure, I did make mistakes too, but I was gradually selling some of my cards too at the time. I stopped making aggressive purchases earlier this year. And the, the way that I operate is I buy fear after my mistakes. So it's not that, you know, I've been amazing at investing. No, I've had a lot of difficulties. But what I've learned is buy fear sell hype and the hype you can notice when the mainstream media is pumping something up because the media what they care about is they care about moolah they care about money right and they realize that okay if some market is hot you know you're gonna get more retweets you're gonna get more impressions whatever and that's good for advertising so the media doesn't care what direction the market is. But at extreme sentiment, this is where the media comes up with, in my opinion, sensational headlines. And that's good for their bottom line. What's good for my bottom line at price extremes when sentiment is completely out of whack I want to do the opposite of what most people are doing. I want to be doing the opposite of what the media is doing. And uh, I'll just give you an example. Uh, a few weeks ago, I tell you that I aggressively trade the options market. And yeah, some of my positions, you know, took uh, a beating, but you know, overall I've been doing well the last few years. Uh, but at the same time, I thought to myself, okay, the mainstream media is, uh, in my opinion, hyping this new variant. And you saw all of these negative headlines. Oh, it's the end of the world. We've got to lock down. We've got to do this, this, and that. And the market was selling off. And I also uh, follow the markets intensely. And I was looking at, oh, wait, the Federal Reserve is going to be aggressively tapering more than what the market is forecasting. So I thought the sell off in the market was because of the tapering in the market. And then I saw all these headlines about this new variant, you know, some of the wife's family members are like really scared about this new variant. They don't want to travel or whatever, right? And I was thinking to myself, wait a second, I want to buy this fear. And ultimately, yeah, I do believe the stock market is in a bubble, but I believe that the time frame is a few years from now, and I have protection on my assets. So if the market were to take a deep dive, I limit my risk with the options that I'm playing with. So long story short, I want to do opposite in times of extreme price moves, extreme sentiment. I don't want to buy the hype I try not to buy the hype and I actually try to sell the hype and with Zion and all these basketball cards in my opinion a lot of people bought the hype we have people that are flippers that are acting like hedge funds they want to buy high and to sell high I know some people will not like what I'm saying but I've learned from this I was in the gold and silver market 10 years ago and I was buying hype and I've learned that you don't do that you got to buy things people don't want to do and I didn't have a YouTube channel but if I showcase what I was buying I was buying things that people weren't really looking at like if I were to mention I was buying Justin Verlander cards in 2019 before the season started, people were going to be like, hey, dude, this guy is a bust, not a bust, but this guy has no more good years after uh, what he had in 2013 when I believe he won the MVP. Or I didn't think he won the MVP then, but he did win the MVP from my knowledge. And he was with the Astros. He got traded. And I was thinking, he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He won the Cy Young that same year. And long story short uh, his cards went up 
think, twofold when he had that no-hitter that year. And then towards the end of the year when they were in the World Series, his cards went up 3x. This was in the time before the pandemic, okay? So I was just buying things no one else is buying, and that's my philosophy. And sometimes people don't like my moves because I buy fear. I don't care what the headlines are. I don't care if people don't agree with me. If the whole crowd is against me, I bet against them. And ultimately, if you're speculating, you're investing, a positive way to look at it is you want to outsmart everyone. The more cynical way is you want to sell to the next sucker. That's what a sophisticated trader uh, from Chicago, Furry Hamzai, he has his own uh, trading platform. And that's what he says. That's what trading's all about. So those, those are two ways to look at it. My goal is to outsmart and outmaneuver everyone. And I try to tell you what I'm doing. You know, I'm getting more subscribers. I'm still telling you what my game plan is. And the thing is, not many people agree with my philosophy. So it's not that I can move markets. Maybe one day I'll be able to move markets and then I'll have to be careful in what I say. But right now, no, I can't. Uh, but anyways, guys, uh, let me know what you have to think, uh, what you think about this. You think I'm off base on this. You think I'm correct. You think actually Zion... If he's dedicated enough, he is going to lose the weight. There are some rumors that, no, he is losing the weight. And if he loses the weight and he plays like he did that one year with Duke, okay. Then I may be wrong on this. But paying this amount of money for a guy who hasn't proven himself and has been injury prone the first few years of his career, that's a player I don't want to get involved with. I remember Derrick Rose in 2010. He was amazing. It was, I think it was 2009, 2010. He was amazing. And then once he had that knee injury, he was never the same. He still is decent, right? He's not his old self. And that's why I'm always cautious about throwing money into young prospects. And if I throw money into a young prospect, I'm not going to be throwing thousands and thousands of dollars. A lot of people threw thousands and thousands of dollars that they regret throwing into him. Now, if they got in way early in Zion, okay, that's a different story. But in my opinion, a lot of people bought the hype and uh, they're definitely regretting the moves. Anyways, guys, uh, let me know what you have to think. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below, guys. Thanks, bye.